innovation is mysterious. Nobody has the whole answer, but I think I have part of it. And it starts with a story, a story about a young woman who grew up in Hungary during the difficult last years of communism. Catalin Carrico dreamt of becoming a biologist, and somehow she overcame all the obstacles, and she did. And at the age of 22, she had a crazy idea about a molecule, a molecule that had just been discovered. She thought she could control it, tell it what to do, make it create whatever she wanted in a tiny living cell. Of course, nobody even knew how to make these molecules then, much less control them. And in the last days of communist Hungary, you couldn't do that research there, no way. So in 1985, through sheer determination, she brought her young family to America. And when I say determination, I mean doing things like hiding most of their savings inside her baby's teddy bear to get out from behind the Iron Curtain. It wasn't easy here either. Her story, like that of many innovators, involves one setback after another. But by chance, she met Drew Weissman from the National Institutes of Health. And together, they fought through several years of more obstacles, eventually launching a company to create a new type of drugs with Carrico as CEO. And that company ultimately failed, as so many startups do. But maybe you've guessed where I'm headed. Their work led to the mRNA vaccines that are doing so much to bring the COVID pandemic under control. Her determination brought her here, kept her going, and led her towards both scientific innovation and entrepreneurship. And now, people mention her as a candidate for the Nobel Prize. Of course, it wasn't just her. Alejandra Gertman, Vice President of Vaccine Clinical R&D at Pfizer, came to the U.S. from Argentina. In fact, Pfizer was founded by a German immigrant. And it's now led by a Greek immigrant. Moderna's co-founder, Nubara Fayan, came here from Lebanon. He worked towards his PhD at MIT while on a foreign student visa, stayed here on an H-1B visa, and he's now an American citizen. By recent count, 27 members of Moderna's world-class team were here on high-skilled immigrant visas. Remarkably, nearly one-third of America's entire biotech workforce was born somewhere else. We all want more innovation, such as these extraordinary vaccines. We all want innovation that changes human life for the better. And because we want a society and a country that thrives, we want more of that innovation and entrepreneurship to happen right here. So how do we get it? Well, right now, roughly 13% of the U.S. population are immigrants. But they represent about 28% of America's entrepreneurs you could say they're pulling more than twice their weight. Now, if you're like me, you might have an entrepreneur like that in your family history. Maybe someone like my own grandfathers, who came as uneducated peddlers, speaking not a word of English. They created something from nothing, rebuilt their lives here, and raised generations of American entrepreneurs and innovators, and gave me the heritage I stand before you to honor. Even as peddlers and shopkeepers, my Lebanese grandparents contributed to a growing, rushing stream of American innovation. Now, measuring innovation is hard, but some remarkable work has been done to quantify the contributions immigrants have made. One NYU economist studied the German-Jewish chemists who escaped the Nazis and came to the U.S. between 1933 and 1945. Their innovations can be tracked in U.S. patent data, and inventions increased by nearly one-third in the fields they entered. They collaborated with chemists who were born here, and those Americans started earning more patents too. And you can measure the extra patents those scientists and engineers kept creating all the way into the 1960s. The immigrants were making the people around them better too. And there are reasons to believe this is a real and reproducible effect.
But what would explain it? Well, a recent Harvard Business Review paper highlights the value of cross-cultural experiences in business teams. Let's say you go overseas on a long-term assignment. You encounter the local products, services, and culture. And you discover ideas that you might want to bring back home. Maybe you think of a way to tweak those ideas so they'll work in a whole different context. The way an Austrian businessman came across Red Bull in Thailand and instantly realized it could be revamped for huge success in the West. Or maybe the ideas come to you in the form of an immigrant. And when she or he joins your team, so does all that potential for innovation. Okay, so not everyone is a brilliant refugee chemist from Germany. I get that. That was an unusual group, in an unusual time. But this innovation dividend keeps happening over and over again. Consider the patents from over 1 million inventors between 1976 and 2012. That's the era of the personal computer and the internet, your iPhone, the first CRISPR patents, and the beginning of deep learning. And yes, Catalin Carrico's first mRNA patents too. The average immigrant inventor created over 35% more inventions. And better inventions too responsible for nearly one-fourth of the economic value created by patents in publicly traded companies. Over and over again, when it comes to innovation, immigrants have been almost twice as productive as the native-born. That's pretty amazing. We need more people like that. So how do we get them? Well, we never, never used to have to worry about this. Our brand did it for us. America. What more did you have to say? A place where you will be welcomed, where your merit can carry you anywhere. The home of the world's best STEM education and all that you need to transform your great idea into reality. But five years ago, we set about changing our brand. We cut the number of student visas we issued by over 40% while Canada and even England were welcoming more international students than ever before. We ramped up rejections. We made it much harder to qualify for an H-1B visa, even if you weren't going to replace an American. Even so, 80% of America's full-time graduate students in electrical engineering and computer science are still foreign nationals, and they represent more than half of all our graduate STEM students. These are tomorrow's innovators and entrepreneurs, whether here or somewhere else. There is no law that says they'll always come here to innovate. Immigrants have been more likely to start companies in almost all of the 69 countries where it's been studied. They could go somewhere else, and the loss to America would be enormous because we would miss out on all their tremendous entrepreneurial potential. So we need to start welcoming and embracing the world's most talented young people again. We learn from them. They make us better. And if they graduate and go home, they'll make contributions while maintaining unforgettable friendships and sustained relationships here. They'll be our partners and our customers. And maybe they'll create the vaccines that end the next pandemic at an overseas pharma company or a biotech startup. And if they want to innovate inside the United States and perhaps become American citizens, we need better pathways for them to stay. That means fixing the work visa and postdoc programs carefully, not with the sledgehammer we've been using. And we need a thoughtful approach, which also ensures collaboration with more diverse native-born talent to guarantee the most creative and successful innovations. When we're finally able to put COVID more or less behind us, it'll be thanks to the vaccines and therapeutics that immigrants and Americans worked so hard together to create. And as we welcome each other back to normal life, let's renew our welcome to the world's greatest innovators, immigrants. Yeah, Hamilton got it right. They do get the job done. Thank you.